I wanted to farm Malisa EX without using my brain, so I needed to have a maxed out blue move. However, I still needed one more duplicate or paper doll. So far, I've done 250 pulls and I've exchanged a few story cards, which is why it says 100 here. So let's see how many pulls it takes for me to get another dupe so I can max limit break her. Okay, it's been 150 pulls, I didn't get blue move, it's still okay. I have tons of cubes, let's keep going. Okay, at this point, it's been 300 pulls. Does anyone remember how I made the whole video saying you shouldn't pull because it's not guaranteed? Well, not me, apparently. Anyway, I pull all the way until 450 and I got nothing, so I give up. So today, I've done a total of 350 pulls and nothing to show for it except for a bunch of these underground party, underworld party night cards, which are pretty good, actually. But anyway, I'm still stuck with level 80 blue Moo, and I have to find a way to farm Melissa EX. I find this video on Isaac's YouTube channel and decide that I can do it without awakening Charmin. This stage has lots of annoying mechanics, like attack down, lots of attack down for 5 turns, boost luck, grey luck, more boost luck, as well as tons of bullet type resistances as well, which basically means you need to full break. Anyway, I modify Isaac's strategy a bit to work with 1 star shaman instead of 5 star shaman, and we'll see how I'll get around all those enemy skills. So, on turn 1, I'm just going to use all of my skills. These will give spirit power up, as well as some party buffs, including party accuracy, which is quite important, as well as tons of Yang attack and defense buffs for Scarlet Remu. Which is important, because those will uh, help her do damage. So I'm using 3 Grazers and Spell Card 2. This will do 3 Sun Breaks to Sakuya and Sane, who are weak to Sun. And I'm using Photogenic Girl Story Card here, which gives Spirit Power up. And there are many cards that give Spirit Power, including Wits of Scarlet Dreams, which gives a whole 2 Spirit Power, so that's more Spirit Power than this one. But I don't need that much Spirit Power, and th this card, Dancer in the Puddle, gives uh, Yang Attack and Defense stat sticks, which is important. I want that extra Yang Attack and Defense stats, which is why I'm using it. And for Charmin, I'm gonna use Spell Card 1, which is again 2 Wood Breaks to Marissa and 1 Sun Break to her friends. Wits of Scarlet Dreams here, because I do need the Spirit Power on Charmin. So I'm only, I'm only using 2 Grazers on Charmin, because she is quite tanky has quite a lot of defense buffs and she can tank this hit and we'll see if she does take that hit but she can tank it and she does have a healing passive so she will heal that damage up but in the end she didn't end up taking the, the hit okay again same thing i'm using uh, spell card 4 here for scarlet remu which is gonna do some sun breaks to sakuya and sunny and i'm using photogenic girls here again it's a spirit power up card but it gives but the stats it gives is Yang Attack and Defense, which is why I'm using it over some other Spirit Power up card, even though it gives less Spirit Power because I don't need that much Spirit Power. You'll notice I'm using, I'm doing 4 Sun Breaks here against enemies with 3 barriers. That's because Scarlet Sakuya has Evasion up, so well, that's Evasion up when she boosts, but she will get that Evasion up. And I want to do an additional Sun Break in case someone misses a break. I will have a little bit of extra uh, insurance to make sure I, I do full break her. And on Charmin, I'm going to be using Spell Card 2. This will do two wood breaks to enemy Marissa and it will break burn barriers. This is, seems a little bit weird, but the enemies actually self-inflict burn. And the self-inflict burn lasts for one turn. If you look carefully later, you can see them self-inflicting burn. And I'm using Satellite Tori Foon, which is going to buff her Yang attack for 3 turns. And you'll see why that's important soon. See, you can see, yeah, if you, if you look carefully, you could have seen the, them self-inflicting freeze and burn. Anyway, enemy Marissa will use a spell card here. That's not really a problem. We are grazing this turn. So on turn 3, Reimu is going to use her last word. Again, it's she has hard scaling here which means that her defense will increase the damage that this does, which is why I'm using all this, all those uh, stat sticks, like this. All these story cards which gives attack and defense, you can't really see, but here you can see all the story cards giving me a huge amount of attack and defense, Yang attack and defense, which is important to make her do enough damage here to kill the enemies. And our Charmin is just going to use spell card 3, this is not to do damage, this is just for the 
for the barrier up as well as focus up from this story card, Attack of the Giants, which will come in handy later on. And here, you can see that Charmin actually has two turns of Yang attack up. And this is very important because on the next turn, the enemies will do, when they gates burst, they will uh, inflict the Yang attack debuff. You'll see what this ends up being next turn, right? Because I have two turns of plus eight Yang attack. That's going to go up to plus 10 Yang attack because of Scarlet Reimu's skill, which gives priority white Yang attack every time they boost. That will sort of negate the Yang attack debuff that the enemies will do on the next turn. So now Shaman has two turns of plus 10 Yang attack, which is now going to be one turn because it's a new turn. And you can see they have inflicted the, the DR debuff, right? Yang attack, Yang and Yin attack down. And 5 turns of minus 8 Yang and Yin attack. You can see minus 8 Yang attack, but the plus 10 Yang attack has become plus 2 Yang attack. And it also lasts for 5 turns now because that's how buffs and debuff work in this game. The, the duration, it will always take the longest duration. So thank you for turning my plus 10 Yang attack for 1 turn, which is going to expire, into plus 2 for 5 turns. Anyway, Scarlet Raymu is done. I'm switching her out into Alice. Alice is going to be doing a bunch of wood breaks over here, which is going to uh, affect Marissa, and she also breaks Paralyze and Burn. Like I said, the enemies do self-inflict Burn, and Alice also can inflict some Burn and Paralyze with her skill, which is what I'm going to do. So there's some self-buff, some P-up, as well as Paralyze and Burn onto Sakuya. Alice also provides party-wide agility, which is very useful for extending Shaman's agility buff, which is important because her last word does scale off agility. Just gonna graze three times, make sure she doesn't get hit because she is quite frail. And use spell card one, Wits of Scarlet Dreams, to just gain some spirit power. Shaman is gonna be using two graze here and spell card four. Which is and with the Shichigo Sun story card, which is going to be increasing my accuracy for three turns, which is quite important because I do need the accuracy buff on her last word. And you'll notice that I can't boost here because there's actually boost lock, right? Which is why Alice needs to do most of the breaks. So yeah, and you can see Alice just doing a whole bunch of breaks. And because of Sakuya's evasion, Alice can actually miss some of this, these burn breaks. But that's still okay, because uh, it, turn, it usually turns out okay, and you'll see why later on. Okay, now it's turn 5. Shaman has taken a little bit of damage, which is why I'm going to use her skill. Perfect timing recover, to recover her health. Alice is going to be doing the same thing. She's going to be using spell card 4. I'm using Miracle Mallet here to stack some crit attack, which, and you'll see why later on. But again, spell card 4 is going to do wood breaks on Marissa and break some burn barriers. Oh, I forgot to boost. I forgot to graze, I mean. Okay, Shaman might not actually have any barriers left right now because she already has grazed 5 times this uh, this match. So that's for 4 graze started with as well as 1 graze from the Attack of the Giant story card. However, she does have 3 graze right now because of her passive, which has a 50% chance to give her an additional barrier every turn. So sometimes during the replays, it might not be able to graze here, but that's still okay because he won't die. She will tank that hit because she's at full HP. I just heal her up. Focus shot onto Sakuya. So this focus shot onto Sakuya from Charmant is sure hit, so it's guaranteed to hit even if Sakuya has however amounts of evasion. It's best more insurance to make sure she's full broken or has taken enough depth has had enough barriers broken because if Alice misses some of her uh, let's take a look at Alice's bullets here the one that breaks burn is actually there's actually only one bullet in the bullet line which means that it's it's quite susceptible to being to missing right so you, you might miss this line because he only has two accuracy against two evasion so it's 75 percent of the time she will miss that bullet and so this extra for that extra focus shot for Simon will help to mitigate that risk. So now it's nuking time, right? Shaman is going to use her last word here to get to kill off these enemies. And Sunny has two barriers left, but that's okay because Shaman's last word is Sun and it's going to instantly full break Sunny. But before that, I'm using 
I'm just gonna use a spell card 2 here on Alice with Bloody Order. This is a crit attack extender, so it's gonna give her two turns of a uh, three turns of crit attack, which is and this is why I used Miracle Man at last turn to buff up her crit attack. So I'm just basically just stacking some crit attack on her. And I'm just using her skill for more agility and yang attack. And as, at this point, I've been carefully stacking up all my buffs. I have max agility, max yang defense, and 4 yang attack. Even though I've been hit with minus 8 yang attack, I still have 4 yang attack. Which is actually going to go up to 5 because of the her last words pre-effect. Pre and the story card I'm using here is Burning Love, which is a little unusual. Ofuda Bullet 20% up, which is not the best because uh, QS Festival does give more damage, but focus up for 2 turns. I have been stacking focus over the last couple of turns with this Attack of the Giants card, as well as Shaman's uh, shot, right? Her focus shot in the last turn also extended her focus. So currently she has tons of focus up, uh, but it's only for 1 turn. 8 levels of focus up for 1 turn. I want to extend that to the next turn, which is what this story card is gonna do. So Charmin does tons of damage here, kills them all off quite easily, and also extends her focus. Alice is just using this card to extend her crit attack, like I said. Here, we're almost done, don't worry. Okay, I'm just gonna use some skills, accuracy for Alice and party wide defense up. And here, I'm actually Grace locked, which is why it was so important for Shaman to have uh, her focus up so that Alice doesn't die. Shaman, she's very tanky, she can take the hit. Alice is gonna use spell card 4. With Anniversary Scarlet Devil Mansion, it's gonna debuff Marissa, because I'm, I'm I don't have any way to full break her, I'm gonna debuff her and then kill her. So Anniversary SDM, 3 Yin Defense down, 3 Yang Attack down. The Yang Attack down also quite relevant here. This card is for Moon Extra, if you don't have it, you can try using Underground Party Knight, which should work as well, it just doesn't have the Yang Attack down. We Spell Effect also does Yin Defense, Crit Defense down, which is quite nice. Shaman is can't really do no more cards, whatever, I'll just use a Spread Shot. So Yin Defense down, onto Melissa. And on the next turn, you'll see all the buffs Marissa uh, Alice has accumulated. Enemy Marissa has 4 Yin Defense down. Let's look at her buffs. Crit 5 Crit Attack and 10 Agility. So her last word does scale off Agility and her Yin Attack obviously and it does hit Killer against Marissa. This is why the Crit Attack is important. Killer means a guaranteed crit. So, and I'm getting some, and these barriers, Paralyze and Burn, are going to increase damage as well because Burn also incre decreases enemy uh, yin, and yin attack and defense. So tons of buffs here, or rather tons of debuffs, and I'm going to use Last Word, which will hopefully kill. For Story Card, I'm using Secret God of the Sky, farmable Story Card, and it gives 50% heavy bullet as well as crit attack, which is great for Alice. She dishes out a nice 140k, no risk of low roll there. This is really consistent, I've had over 500 runs now without fail. Now before I talk about story cards and requirements, let's see what happens when Alice misses her break. Like I said, this break, this is only one bullet, so and this might miss because enemy Sakuya has that evasion up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost two times instead of three times to simulate missing this break, and we're gonna see what happens. As you can see, Sakuya's burn barriers are not broken. These are the burn barriers from Alice's skill. Anyway, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna boost two times instead of three times, and see so we can really see what happens when uh, Alice misses all those shots. Now, as you can see, on the New King turn, Sakuya has four barriers here instead of zero, and Sane also has four more barriers than usual, but in the replay, if I actually boosted three times, she would always be hit because she has no evasion. But anyway, Sakuya is not going to die here when I use uh, Shaman's last word. She's, but, but she will be full broken because four sun breaks against... Yeah, so she does get full broken. Oh, she still died. <laughs> but in this other replay, she actually didn't die, but she is full broken, so she won't attack 
and Alice will finish her up with her last word along with Marissa on the last turn, so it still turns out okay. So that little inconsistency with Sakuya's evasion didn't really affect the overall consistency of the run. Now let's look at the requirements. Scarlet Reimu has the highest requirements. She needs lots of Yang attack and defense so that her last word can do enough damage to kill. And which is why I'm running all these story cards with Yang attack and defense, as you can see over here. So Dancer in the Puddle, everyone got this card for free if you have been logging in. So very nice to have that. Here, Photogenic Girls is from the current event, but if you don't have it, you can use It's Spring instead. There you go, it's, it's It's Spring, which gives very similar Yang attack and defense that's just slightly worse. And Hakure Shrine Annie is also a card that everyone got for free if you logged in, otherwise use some other Yang attack and defense card. And here, with this Photogenic Girls, uh, again it's just a stat stick, so Yang attack and defense stats. And on the last word, obviously, Papatia and Necromancer, which is the best card in slot, 50% light bullets up. And uh, I have Superior Enhanced her by quite a bit, plus 60 Yang Attack, plus 40 Yang Defense. And this is a little bit overkill, it can, you can try with slightly lower requirements because when I first started this farm, Scarlet Reimu was level 98 and Orange Heart, so the require it is still consistent, so the requirements are a little bit lower than this. But this is just what I'm running, so you can see. For Shaman, I am all... Uh, these story cards are all required. Attack of the Giants, you can you can try to change this. You, if you don't have this, uh, or you have to, if this is not max limit break, that's okay. Uh, if you don't have this card at all, it's a gacha card, five star gacha card. You can try using some other, you can try using some other barrier restoration card. This card, Satellite Tori Food, it is a farmable card. Yeah, here you can see that even at non maximum break, it gives one yang for three turns, which is what we're using it for. So you do not need a maximum break copy of this card. If you do not have it and you want to do this comp, you can farm it from Hifu B3 on hard. Is this stage over here? This stage. But otherwise, the rest of these story cards are all pretty much required. If you're if your shaman is at 1 star, if your shaman is bricked, that means at 5 levels of awakening, then you can get away with a little bit uh, with like um, a different setup like from Isaac's video or instead of burning love letter, you can use another dif a different focus up card. And for Alice, well I should also mention, I do have some superior enhance on, on shaman, but I don't know if, but that uh, may or may not be required, I'm not, I can't really tell. And on Alice, she is Purple Heart, so the requirements, the stats requirements aren't that big on her. It's not that much of a problem. Um, I do have a little bit of Superior Enhance on her. For the story cards, some of them can be replaced. Like I said, any SDM can be replaced with Underground Party Knight, so it's from, from the Blue Moo banner. And which also gives Yin defense down. It doesn't give Yang attack down, so it might be a small problem, but it should work with most of the time. Bloody Order is a crit attack extender. It can be replaced. It's from an event, so you might not have it, and it can be replaced with Swine Raid with this card, which is from Login. So if you've been logging in, you have this card, and it gives. But oh, this card also gives three turns of crit attack, although it's only two crit instead of three crit. But if your Alice is pink, then it should be fine. Because my Alice is purple, like I said. And also, actually, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's it for this video. Full analysis of this comp. Stick around for some bloopers. Which is... This state... No, on, that's, this, is, this is Lunatic. Which is... Charmin is gonna be... Uh, grazing one time. And using... No, Shaman is going to be grazing two times, which is going to increase my accuracy for two turns. Oh, fuck. Uh, Shaman 